The topic of this video is called Exponents and Integers Problem Type 1. Um, the title's a little odd. It actually lines up with an online math program called Alex. Um, but anyone that wants to learn about how to handle exponents with positive and negative numbers, you've come to the right place. There will be another video after this. Um, it's called Problem Type 2. And what it's going to deal with is um, it'll be um, exponents and integers, but it's going to deal with when there is no parentheses. Um, or there might be a negative sign outside of the parentheses. So that might be worth a look because it kind of kicks it up a notch from this video itself. So, all right, let's just dive right in. What is an exponent? So an exponent could be something like this. That's your exponent. This down here is called your base. And the exponent is telling the base to multiply it by itself three times. So three cubed would be three times three times three. If you're a little rusty with exponents, um, you might see three cubed and immediately say, oh, the answer is nine. But if you can remember to either slow yourself down by writing it out or taking your time as you think about it, you realize it's not nine. Three times three will give you nine, but then when you multiply the nine times three, you'll be getting 27. So just one more, just to emphasize that. Two to the fifth, your brain kind of latches on to things that are familiar to you. It's going to see the two and the five and say, oh, the answer is 10. But remember, the exponent is saying to multiply two by itself five times. So just take your time. Um, I've learned myself to catch, catch myself making mistakes or writing things out slows me down so that I'm less prone to making them. Two times two gives me four. Four times two gives me eight. 8 times 2 gives me 16, and 16 times 2 gives me 32. All right, so that's just a quick review for how exponents are handled. Notice the two first examples were positive numbers. I used a positive 3 on the first one and a positive 2 on the second one. So when I flip this to the next page, I'm actually going to look at some examples where we have negative numbers. For negative numbers, I would do exactly the same thing that I my words of advice were, is if you have negative 4, and you're raising that to the second power, write it out. Um, I think writing it out will kind of just, like I say slow you down, but that's a good thing because brains, our brains want to be done with math. They want to be done with math fast, and they feel very confident that something so simple can be done quickly without any thought. Um, but slowing yourself down as you're writing it out, the negative four times the negative four, if your brain isn't, it's, it won't go into such a cocky mode. It'll be like, oh wait, a negative times a negative is positive, and four times four is 16. So again, it's just, there is some value to writing things out. Um, let's try negative four to the third power. All right, so you have negative four times negative four times negative four, and just work your way from left to right. Negative four times negative four, we just did that above, and that is a positive 16. And 16 times a 4, which will end up being negative, obviously. 6 times 4 is 24. 4 times 1. So this will end up being a negative 64 as a final answer. It's really just kind of keeping track of uh, when you have positives and when you have negatives. How about if we have something like um, negative 2 to the 4th power? So negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2. Negative 2 times negative 2, positive 4. Positive 4 times negative 2 is negative 8. And negative 8 times negative 2 gives us a positive 16. Um, there is a rule of thumb that in our notes, um, let's see, if a negative, actually I'm going to see if I can try this. Um, so if a negative number... is raised to an odd exponent, you know, odd, like 1, 3, 5, 7, odd exponent, the answer will be negative. So that's worth writing down, um, and that's how some people kind of process it. So let me just kind of make that so it's legible. So if a negative number is raised to an odd exponent, um, then the answer will be negative. Okay. Similarly, let's do this. Um, not is, if. Um, if a negative number, so it's going to be really similar, right? We're just going to change a couple words. If a negative number is raised to an even 
exponent, um, the answer will be positive. Those are your rules of thumb if you're not inclined, like if you're better at remembering rules of thumb rather than writing things out, that these are totally valid rules just to write. Um, so immediately if I had, we're not going to do the math on this one, but if I had a negative 18 to the 6th power, I'm not going to do 18 6 times because this will take me all day, although I could grab a calculator, but I won't. Our, my goal is, in this particular instance, is if I have a negative number, this exponent is an even number, so I know that my answer will be positive. So either way. All right, that's kind of a good rule of thumb. That's pretty much it in a nutshell. I am going to kick it up a notch with exponents and integers in the next video. It's called Exponents and Integers Problem Type 2. And what it does is it deals with all the, well, all the problems that we've dealt with today had parentheses around what we were raising to a power. So sometimes you will get problems where the, there is not parentheses, but you still have a, like a negative number apparently. So we're going to take a look at that in the next video.